Our topic then is the big conversation that is the digital confluence in the after agenda. When I discussed this initially with someone, the first thing the person asks is, which angle are you coming from? Are you coming from the trade to the digitalization part, or are you coming from the digitalization part to trade? We want to look at it from the digitalization part of trade, so that uh, digitalization part, so that we connect this to how we can help in the trade uh, agenda. Not long, I hope you all heard about the after that was uh, the agreement that was made, African uh, free, uh, African continental free trade um, area. Uh, that is an uh, agreement that was made, and so. With me, a uh, very able uh, doctors uh, who want to look at this thing from the angle of academia. Um, perhaps with your permission, let me just remove this. I think perhaps it's not giving me enough, yeah. So, uh, like uh, m my friend said, that a and you understand? That is when he was given the opportunity to speak. <laughs> in Kumase. So, um, I want to introduce m my guest um, to you, and, and I start with um, Dr. Isaac Riafe. Dr. Isaac Riafe is a senior lecturer at the Department of Computer Science, University of Ghana, where he's leading research on human computer behavior. He's also the head of the Human Computer Interaction Lab at the department. There are a lot about him, but because of time, uh, I, I will leave it there. But he's one person who is um, doing so well when it comes to digitalization. And so um, I'll make this as a short um, information about him. Next to uh, doctor is um, Mrs. Felicia uh, Eggman. Um, she's a lecturer at the Computer Science Department of Gimpa. Um, she's a very passionate uh, woman and lecturer, and uh, t uh, she has a lot of skills when it comes to um, this area of um, to the topic area. And one interesting thing about her is that she's also a candidate and almost finishing a PhD in Computer Science Department at the University of Ghana. You know, one of the major opportunities of the after uh, agreement was that uh, it was supposed to increase employment and uh, it was supposed to also bring about investment opportunities. So, um, and that technological development is one of the key things that we expect to gain from the after. So, you coming from that angle, um, what, what comment do you make uh, about this? Because we are interested in seeing the confluence of uh, the after and then the technology. So, your comment about that? The. Yes, um, thank you, Dr. Boatin. Um, now, when we, when we talk about infrastructure, it's, it's a fact, but when we talk about infrastructure, we, 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 we think about putting the right things in place, and then we always forget that data is more important. Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about data, you talk about making money. When you talk about data, you talk about having infrastructure that promotes data collection. Sensory data okay. is, is what is going on now. And we should be thinking about sensory data. Now, coming to your point of um, what is happening in youth employment, now, it's very, very interesting. I, I kind of think that I'm too radical to technology because mm -hmm. when I hear we, we talk about um, youth in planting cocoa and stuff like that, I ask myself, how much money do we make from cocoa and how much can we make from technology? That's the first mm. question we should ask ourselves. <laughs> so one metric tank of cocoa is currently selling around $2,300. And one iPhone sells at $1,200. Mm. What should you be thinking about? This is this, this simple mathematics. How many people carry iPhones to Ghana every day through Kotoka International Airport? And how many Ghanaians are able to carry a metric tank of cocoa to America? So immediately you know you are out. Now, if we don't encourage the youth on that tangent, then we have a problem. The, I, um, the um, iOS and Android markets alone is fetching over $33 billion. How much of that is coming to Ghana? Now, these are the questions we should start asking ourselves. So we, we should start putting in place enabling environments. Now, one of the things that you don't really need big capital to start is technology. The challenge, however, is that 
we are not promoting in-house technologies. Now ask yourself, how many of our infrastructure, or how many of our software developed that we are using in this country are developed by Ghanaian vendors? That's the first question. I think those in economics should do some calculations and tell us how much foreign exchange we are losing because of technology exports. Now, when, we, when you were talking, you, you mentioned that 3% of, um, of what is going on, what we share, what our, of our trade is coming from Africa. It simply means that 3% of what we need, what we produce in Africa is 3% of what we need. Exactly. I don't believe that we are producing things that people need. A lot of us are buying from AliExpress. Mm. A lot of us are buying from Amazon, even though Amazon is having challenges in Africa. People are still buying from there. So it means that we are not doing what the people want. That is all. Now, we can, we can do all the meetings. We can put in place all the policies. I'm reading through these documents. I am told that Ghana is the first to sign the policy or develop custom procedure for um, um, this um, after trading um, thing. But the point is that are we prepared? Are we putting in place structures? Are we doing the things that we need to do to, to, to make sure that we are doing? And that is where I believe that academia comes in. Can we, for once, think upside down? Can we go down to those who are going to use this technology? Like, can we go to the universities? Can we go to the secondary schools? Can we go to the primary schools, the kindergartens? Have a forum with the kids. Ask them. What are you expecting to see in Africa in the next 20 years when you mm. grow up? Mm. Let's ideate from there. Let's get their ideas. Then let us now try to work around it to suit them. Because it looks as if we are only thinking in our interest. We, we, are, we are thinking about how can the youth get employment? I've met a lot of guys who are doing um, um, say employment coaching and things like that. And I've told them that, look, you have never looked for a job before. <laughs> so it, it, it's not an issue of coaching. Who said that the youth don't have brains? They have it. But the opportunities are not there. We, we should not, we should not, we look, if we are not careful, if we are not careful, we come up with all these platforms and set up everything, and we'll be surprised that it will still be the foreign market who is infiltrating into our system through different ways. They will come and set up the companies here. That is what is going to happen. They will come and set up companies here, and then they'll be trading among themselves. I think I will end there for now. Thank you. Okay, so well, um, what this means is that the key thing is that we are not taking uh, advantage of um, I mean, in terms of production, we are not actually taking advantage of what people need. We are rather thinking of, I mean, producing things that people actually don't need in this part of our environment. All right. Um, but when you were talking, you brought in um, the issue of research, and that brings me to my next question. Um, you see, all along, it looks like there's a kind of uh, isolations. I don't know whether I should use that term, but then among academia, industry, and even serious research. Uh, coming to a digital uh, economy, uh, what do you say about the kind of uh, disconnections between the uh, academia, the industry, and the, because if that one is properly, I think we can take advantage of this uh, free trade we are talking about. All right, thank you very much. I think I would like to come in here. Um, between academia, the industry, and uh, especially in our part of the world where we, we talk about agriculture as if that is what really boosts our hello that's what really boosts our economy mm -hmm. and and but then we we are having that divide between those who are actually producing at the agriculture level those who are researching into agriculture and then those who are being fed from agriculture so th there should be that confluence between all these parties now i i, I asked myself as he mentioned we are we are buying things a lot of things from outside and as if we are not producing them mm. one there is a huge divide between the different parties in our economy mm -hmm. now we we have people producing probably in some parts of the country where we are saying they are riding on some infrastructure maybe it is I in, in the internet he mentioned but we're talking about internet. Are we having reliable internet? Yeah. Is that consistent? Mm. Are we able to have access to what we need from the services, the, the, the software that are being produced? Are people able to access them continuously? Mm -hmm. These are things that we should be asking ourselves. Maybe the solutions coming from outside are tailored to meet the environment and the architecture that has been produced with the outside uh, countries. Now, we have challenges here. So... 
are the solutions we are providing meeting the needs of our country. Now, there are a lot of places in Ghana that we still go to and you have to still be on a tree or in some particular location to access the internet. Now, this is still a, a problem in our country. So the solution should not only be about providing internet available solutions, but also about um, providing solutions that will meet everybody in, in, the, in, the, in the country. So the distribution of those solutions becomes very key. And that is why I think academia becomes very important because academia is not only looking at providing solutions that will feed the, 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 the industry now, but we are looking at solutions that will feed the industry from now and then beyond. Because you are teaching someone in the classroom to use some solutions that are important for him now, but also allowing that person to think into the problems of his society. So that as he is thinking about mathematics or some calculus or some algorithm that is solving some problem now, the algorithm is also supposed to work and be robust enough to meet a challenge that would come up in the future which is very key for academia. And so research may be about things we are doing now, meeting the needs of current society, but it should also be about researching into things that are into the future. We are talking now about 5G networks. Some countries are already talking about 6G networks. Mm. Now, what are the, the, the solutions that would be, be, be on these 5G networks, on these 6G networks? It would be a flaw for us to start buying solutions for 5G networks. And and forcing Ghanaians to pay for them. When we know that most of our infrastructure may not support these 6G networks that they are talking about. So the, the important thing, like he mentioned, are to provide solutions that are tailor-made for the country. And I think some of these solutions are coming up. But one challenge we have, and I think um, we know about women and how we use technology. It is a problem because you are thinking about a vast majority of the nation being women and people in the, the local areas, mm. we, are, the, we have the banks now pushing for the, the short code to access mm. banking services in some of our rural areas. And people still go to the ATM, withdraw money, and count the money before they, they leave the ATM <laughs> because they want to be sure. <laughs> people will still queue to the bank and still take 200 cities from the bank because what you are thinking is a solution is so far-fetched from the one you have made it for. Yeah, he cannot put himself into that solution. Hmm. And so, since technology for me, right in, 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 a, in, a, in an ecosystem where humans are very key, it is important that we, 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 we as researchers are moving gradually into an interdisciplinary research area where I am a technologist, I'm looking at technology solutions, but I'm also thinking about the social and cultural background, the religious background of the people I'm producing for, mm. so that the solution I produce for them meets just their need. Not that it is so far-fetched, but they feel it is just for them and they would accept it. Then we can produce solutions in Africa that will meet the needs of Africans. And then I think that the 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 whole employment we are talking about, because the youth know that whatever we are talking about in the classroom, and, and sometimes I find it some way when, when we meet people from the industry and then we make in statements like, what you are learning in the classroom is so far away from what you really need in the, in the industry and therefore you are just wasting your time in the classroom. And so a student comes to class, you are teaching and he doesn't want to listen because he thinks you don't understand what he needs. But I think that th th that confluence we are talking about is because we want to bring those solutions to our classroom and teach about them. The student produces solutions that will meet Ghana, and he knows that he is in because his grandmother, his mother, or his father somewhere in the village in agricultural farm will still make this very useful to him. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay, a quick intervention. Okay, a very thank quick you. one. Um, mm. When you were saying, I asked mm. myself, I've said this on several platforms, and I wish someone challenges me. Can we find any problem that is a Ghanaian problem that has not been solved in the classroom? Every Ghanaian problem has been solved by students in our classroom. The only issue is that people are not ready to implement it. We don't trust it. We rather would prefer getting um, solutions from outside. MTN 
is, is one of the largest uh, telcos in Ghana. About 99% of their solutions are not produced from Ghana. Mm. And yet we, we, we have IT students, we have mm. computer science students, we, we are not. Go to Bank of Ghana. All the solutions in Bank of Ghana are bought from outside. But mm. every application that Bank of Ghana is using have been done in the classroom. And we've done more than that. So what is the problem? Wow. Do you want to add something to the, the okay, Yes, right, a little okay. bit. Uh, yeah. The discussion becoming interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a big challenge. The challenge regarding academia and industrial collaboration is something I have asked many, 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 many times. Mm. If you go to UK, you see that they change courses. In fact, even the same course, they will change the title. Mm. The reason is that they want to look at something that will drive, it's industrial driven. Mm -hmm. You get where I'm coming from. So like Dr. Uh, Riafi said, Bank of Ghana is doing something that we are doing in Ghana. MTN is using something we are doing in Ghana, but they are importing them. On one platform, I said, countries that are advancing nowadays are actually countries that are trans exporting technology, mm -hmm. es exporting innovation, exporting artificial intelligence. Suddenly, we are always consuming it. And that is a challenge. How much does it cost us? Let's look at the platform we have here tonight mm. or this evening. Ask ourselves which of these two supporting everything we are doing was produced in Ghana. So if you calculate the costs of hosting this program, take the infrastructure costs and see how much is the country is actually paying for exporting it. Could we have done differently? You'll be shocked. Even the rice that we took for lunch is foreign rice. <laughs> we will be shocked. Even that one we could produce here. The lack of academia and industrial collaboration is lack of national policy. We don't have it. If you go to US, there are certain universities, they are purely for a, a community. They call them community universities or colleges. The reason is to feed, produce students, to feed industry in the community. Today, polytechnics are doing MBA. Tech is doing uh, everything Legon is doing. Where are we? Where are we as a nation? So if you are building, I mean, can we have industrial solution that is driven by research? No. Policy, everything that they are doing, is this program was influenced by research? We were here some years when EEC developed a new logo. We didn't know that we realized the logo has been designed. In other countries, they will put for, to schools for a challenge. I remember when we were in Denmark, the German company developed a website and they, they wanted somebody to hack into it. They threw it at a, a hackathon. I remember the, stu the student who won got 5 million uh, euros for their schools. Where are we going? Mm -hmm. And you complain that we are teaching students who are not fit in the industry, even internship. Looking for internship for public institution is a problem. You, try, you send people from here to UK to go and study Excel. You put people to hotels that cost about 700 Ghana cities a night just to go and study project management. You know, all these things you travel to do, you pay huge. Pick our student for internship. And when you finish, you want five years experience. Who should give it to them? Mm -hmm. Anyway, we will continue to ask questions. We continue to ask questions. But we want a nation, if they are talking about African trade, we want a trade that will benefit our youth. It shouldn't start from so far. It can be just basic in that internship. Then academia, I'm happy my rector is here. Can we introduce a year, a year in, year out? That student can go out one year to industry, study something, they write a report, and come back. That academia is not only write exams, pass, and all that you, f you remember after school is my last paper I wrote. We are happy. We belong to a school that we are teaching people skill set. But we want them to go to industry. By the time they finish school, they practice what we are teaching them. That it doesn't look abstract. Besides that, the experience is not only what they know, but they are also able to work with people. So that they finish school and they don't only go to the work with their skills, but ability to integrate. Anyway, we will end here, and I know further questions will come for us to contribute. Yeah, th th thanks very much for that part. Um, I think from the morning session, most of these issues uh, came up, and uh, people asked questions about them. But 
One striking thing that uh, came to mind that from the, the vice president was um, uh, looking at the ecosystem not only from from the uh, what do you call them? Uh, you know, he looked at the ecosystem from two aspects. Apart from th those who are um, uh, who are supposed to produce the the digital part, also those who are supposed to consume. You know, that's, let me put it in the layman's language. That's the angle I get it. And so we should not only look at one side of the um, uh, of it. And so I think what you are saying simply means that. It's about time we we look at it holistically in that kind of in that regard, but um, it then brought to mind a certain question or conclusion I made in the conference some time back at La Palm uh, Royal Beach. That is in the um, uh, Ishmael Yansen and Associates Business Roundtable. That was on March 20 uh, March 2009. No, no, that was March 2019. And I want to ask whether this the question is still uh, relevant. Um, I concluded that businesses need to digitalize. They must innovate and adjust business models to, to capture new revenue streams for both here and abroad. Workers in all sectors must continually learn, risk, uh, reskill, and upskill themselves to take and uh, to take on better and fulfilling jobs enabled by the digital economy so i ask that is this a uh, conclusion i made still relevant today 2021 uh, please is it me yeah, uh, can i answer I, okay yeah, that's okay. fine yes it is uh, as i said i mean i've got an opportunity to be part of i mean witness Vice President Automation Agenda, and one of the sessions, I said that it's good to champion and make noise about it. Sadly, we are far behind because, as we speak, we now institution, countries are using what is called artificial intelligence. There's a migration to that. When you process data, you get information. When you process information, you get knowledge. Countries that have utilized knowledge well are now using artificial intelligence. We are currently in the stage of possibly between information processing and knowledge management. We are still not even there yet. But the question regarding that, does all this re business re-engineering, automation, digital platform is still relevant? Of course, the answer is yes. Yesterday, I read an article as part of preparation. Amazon, which is the richest uh, man, uh, Jeff Besson, and his business, Last year, I spent about $300 billion on innovation. You know so what they did? They, they, they are buying smaller, smaller silo companies, denying their competitors access to those. It's a very strategic move to increase competitive advantage. You understand that? Today, we live in global world. And like you said, many of the things that we are using now, are be, we are buying them from abroad, isn't it? Gone where the day somebody have to go there and come. Today, you can sit here at the comfort of your home and buy from Amazon, go to Korea and deliver it to you, isn't it? The challenge is that these big institutions, big fish, we call them the whales, they are competing with the small, small what? Businesses for survival. Can circle uh, people selling phones compete with Amazon? No. So the truth is that if businesses don't tr start now to digitize, start now to think big, start now to innovate, and start now to do the things that they will continue to compete at the global stage, sorry, they can't survive in the next five years. That is true. The competition now, people are buying from Alibaba.com. A colleague said, many of you have done that. eBay, a whole lot. I mean, the business of uh, Tonaton is very good, isn't it? Many people are selling their platform there. But the good thing is that who are they competing with? The whales. Can they survive? So you want to start business, your small thing, and do it. Very soon, we are here when Chinese came, and even the slippers, the Hinewa, they did the Chinese version. They can take clothes. They did the same thing. Everything you think of, they can live everywhere and do everything. We are thinking about survivor. So my brother, doctor, I agree with you. We can't do without it. We live in digital ecosystem. 
under one umbrella. For businesses, survival depends on what can I use technology as a strategic tool to increase my competitive advantage. In another way, Ran, when you flip it, is to decrease my competitive disadvantage, without which you can't survive. The reason being that the, uh, the, good, uh, the bigger business will make your business too expensive. The consumer being wise, they'll switch. You're producing this, it's being sold for 300 cities for Ghana. A bigger one you can buy, you add Korea, everything, it will get to Ghana for 25 Ghana cities or 250 Ghana cities. Surely everybody will go to that. What is going to happen? Unemployment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything you want to add? Otherwise, yeah. I was okay. trying to also um, quote someone who made similar conclusions, but he was specific. And I just wanted to ask to look at it. He says that uh, which businesses can gain from the digital economy? And then he identified one as businesses that can exploit information. So I like one of you to look at. So how do we exploit this information? Another is to look at businesses that can exploit behavior. So how can we, so as we are teaching our students, what, how can we take advantage by exploiting the behavior of, of human beings? You understand? So coming from an economic point of view, you know, you need to take that advantage. We also need to look at businesses that can serve the long tail. Okay, so putting these two together, any, any comment that you want to make in any of them, I think will help us. Okay, so I would want to talk about the, the use of artificial intelligence, which okay. we now, so artificial intelligence is looking at trends, trends in behavior, mm -hmm. trends in data, and then mm -hmm. making a fair decision. So the system learns from what historical data is showing, which I means that we should know what what the data is presenting, and then the system learns and makes um, mm -hmm. projections into the future, which is very key for our environment. But like I, I said initially, it is about the, the use of those technology tools. The, the challenge we have is that the data we have in Africa may not be representing what we have in Africa, mm -hmm. because the people using the technology may just be a fraction of the populace of Africa. Mm. So we may be producing whatever we have, but it does not meet the whole need of Africa. Mm. It is important that as the policies that we make target adoption and usage of this technology, not only for people living in urban areas, but in all the divides of the nation. And then we can have data collected such that whatever we are producing, it meets the needs. Otherwise, whatever we may be importing and bringing into the country, or trying to market to the outside world that this is the need of Africa, may not represent what we really need. For instance, we, we talk about Ghanaians pushing for online education and all this, but mm -hmm. really, we sit in our classrooms and we realize that you want to teach a student online, and the student just puts the phone on and then lies in bed asleep. He is gone. <laughs> there and is put nothing teddy going. Bed. I say in some instances, they'll put a teddy bed in front. In so front, and then they are gone. <laughs> He's listening to you. <laughs> because we are trying to teach people who have not been brought up in an environment where digital mm. education was from the beginning. And therefore, there must be that hybrid to bring the student up to speed, speed. so mm. that when the student sits in the classroom and is still learning whatever high level knowledge we are given, mm. the student can pick it up. Mm. We, we are thinking in our minds that all our students are coming from uh, these high level schools. Mm. Some students are coming from villages where they only had the opportunity of seeing a mouse in a video. And those students are supposed to have access to this high level education that you are presenting to him. It becomes difficult. So the divide is just too wide mm. to have digital solutions that are riding very high and the populace that are supposed to use them are very low. The mm. knowledge we are having, the data we are transforming does not represent the country. And mm. so we should be looking more at using academia as probably a tool. And, I, and sometimes I don't want to say that academia should just be a tool for training and using our models. Mm. We, we have some services and we, want, we think academia can be used to test it to see if it's working or not. But mm. in some way, that is what we may have to use academia for. So that 
academics can test these solutions in different areas of our nation. The data we generate can be rich enough to represent what we have in our country mm. so that the solutions that come, whether they are being imported or they are being produced, which is what, what we want, yeah. will represent what we have because yeah. that the model can just be trained to predict into the future That's right. based on the data we have. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh -huh. yes, to, yeah. to add to that, that's, mm. uh, first of all, uh, on the AI thing, That's right. currently they have seen that the current AI engines are biased um, because most of the predictions they are making are not for Africans. It's not mm. for black skin. Mm -hmm. For instance, in um, image recognition, mm -hmm. most of the data sets available, it's not Africans. Wow. The, the, the best you can get is uh, black Americans. And so you could see that the patterns, even detecting smile and all those things, have different meanings. So when it comes to behavior, that is, that is one thing that we need to look at. Now, let me, let me get back to what you were saying. I believe that only one type of business will survive the future. The mm. business that is able to convert everything they are producing into zeros and ones is the only business that will... Um, zeros and ones. Yeah, let me, let me explain mm. that. So I had um, a student in one of my mm. classes, one student, we were doing this um, experiment. Like we were asking students how they can digitize their um, uh, yeah. businesses. And then okay. she says that she produces shit mm -hmm. So how would she also digitalize this uh, shit And I said, look, it's mm -hmm. simple. In the interim, instead of producing shit sell shit recipe online. If you are selling recipe, now, if you are selling shit one is like 30 CDs, right? If you sell different types of shit recipe online, and it's one is 50 pesos, and you get 10,000 people buying, you have made more money than selling the shit that is, that is how we are not able to innovate. We, we are still thinking the old way. We, we don't see, but I believe that. A day will come, maybe we'll be dead by then, but a day will come that you buy a printer, right? And then um, you want to eat fufu, so you press fufu, print, soup, a ben quine, and it will be printed. <laughs> it, looks, it, looks, it looks like it's not true, but Amazon is actually printing, uh, sorry, um, KFC is printing uh, chicken nuggets. Okay. They have started in sale, chicken nuggets printed. You can check this thing online from YouTube. They have managed to see how they can print beggars. Hmm. So it, it's changing. The, the future is changing. We, we need to start thinking the businesses will fall out. I always say that don't let us care about businesses that will fall out. That, that shouldn't be our problem. But what we should be thinking about is that how can we, because I don't believe that the more you bring, when I, when I wake up in the morning and wow. I see the Zoom I'm Lion really cleaners, cleaning. I wonder why we are doing this now. Mm. Where we can have automated vehicles to clean. I've told my head of department that we should sack the cleaner in my department. <laughs> and he keeps saying why. And I tell him that, look, robots can do it. I, I, I clean my office with a robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have eye robots that are doing the cleaning. So that, that, this is how we should be thinking. If we don't um, um, consider what the African want, Majority of our population, about over 60% of our population, are the youth. The youth have a different perspective from us. They think differently. Sometimes we say they are not intelligent. It's not true. They are super intelligent. They are more intelligent than us. The only challenge we have is that we are not giving them what they need. Hmm. We are not giving them what they need. So we, we want them to think like how we were thinking. So it's like you, make, you, you want them to look into the future with yesterday's glasses. Mm. They can't process it. I don't see why I should walk to the bank and I should be completing a paper form. But mm. put it on WhatsApp and let them do bank application on WhatsApp and you see how many of our youth will be using it. Start, mm. I, I keep telling people that we should start even experimenting certain exam questions on WhatsApp. Mm. And you see how students will perform with emojis. These are the things that we are not looking at. <laughs> we are only looking at solutions that are good for us. Yeah. But not solutions that are okay. good for them. But the mm. future is not for us. Exactly. Until we get that thing mm. clear. All mm. this, I'm telling you, we will have this. We, will, we don't even need to do this African, trans-African or intra-African free trade thing. Because, look, you can do whatever. The, the youth don't need the things you are producing. Mm. So you bring cocoa or you bring chocolate. They are no more interested in chocolate. They are interested in buying games and playing it. And that's where <laughs> the money is. You, you, you are, they are buying drones. They are, these are the things that are driving the market. It is no more raw material. Okay. So I think we have to rethink oh. the whole system. Yeah. Well, well, in fact, uh, 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 uh,
Uh, you can see if you want to continue, we will talk and talk. In fact, I know this, my people. We, we, we can even, uh, be, uh, 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 can, we can stay up to 6 o'clock and, and you'll have a lot to tell share. The time was so short and um, uh, also soon we, we need to be wrapping up. But we cannot go without, you know, also allowing you to uh, tell us, uh, or from your perspective, what do you think about whatever uh, the, the panel uh, have already discussed. So, anyone wants to talk, you can lift your hand, and then I think, uh, yes, you can ask a question, you can make a comment, but very brief, please, because I've been asked to... Okay, I'll use mine. Thank you. Uh, my name is Madia from Zongovation Hub. My name is Madia from Zongovation Hub. I have two concerns. Okay. A quick one was what you talked about. I wanted to ask whether the long essays that we write at university are relevant, because you could see that they are being parked in the libraries and they are gathering dust. Mm. Don't you think that the recommendations that are in this research work, if we are really going to use it, it will really help us get somewhere? And the nature of our research. I remember at GIJ, um, it's just about going through the same thing that we are being taught, we are being restricted. Then one student came out with changing the name of GIJ to Ghana, I think, Communication School. Mm. And what he did was to, not just to write, but he produced a plaque, the mm. design and everything, to show that this is his work and not the normal one. Mm. But you could see that we are not even given the chance to, to you know, think critically and create something. Mm. Okay, so we got some um, volunteers from Germany and we're interacting. They were to tell us their culture and what they think about Ghana and everything. It was just so simple. We were writing it. They didn't write. What they did was they wanted to describe Ghana as how they see it. So they drew a traffic light and drew a lot of cars. The only simple explanation was we have a lot of traffic in Ghana. Mm. They drew a clock mm. and we asked them, what does this mean? It says we call it Ghana man time. So they're using the clock to describe that in very, very <laughs> simple and creative way. Mm. But it looks like I don't know if the research is really relevant. And my okay. next question to, mm -hmm. sorry, a very so, quick one. Will okay. there be a day where we would sit here mm -hmm. and not go back to the problems? Because it looks like we know the problems already. Where we would sit here and then discuss what we've done and what we've achieved. Mm -hmm. What we're not able to do. So what's the way forward? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, that, but, but before my, my friend takes it, um, let's also remember that uh, we have three aspects of research, basic research, which is the one we do in the classroom. Then we have the, the applied and we have the, what we call the action research. So whenever there's any of these discussions, it should be situated in between. Uh -huh. Well, the basic one is not for immediate solution. But as you said, we are still packed there. And uh, that's why Gimpa now, what we are moving to is that we want to do case writing. Now, that is spearheaded by my, my professor here, Professor Bonsu. And now, we are moving, we're going to have a case center and the case center will have where you, you look at an institution and, and write a case about that institution. And this is applicable here, and we can learn from it. So that's just by the way. Uh, thank you for the question. That's a very brilliant question. And please, can you... Uh, uh. Yeah, it's uh, quite of... Uh, I mean, it's a lot of multiple in one question. I'm picking one bit. Is your research still relevant? I'm telling you, yes. Uh, sometimes with the, uh, the lecturers, or I call myself teachers, we get hit by the student thinking that, oh, what you are teaching is not really blah, 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 blah. Don't forget that academia is so unique institution. We are also regulated. Maybe that is some of the things we don't explain to you that what we are also doing is driven by what is called National Accreditation Board. You understand that? So, I mean, there was a time I wanted to introduce what is called problem-based learning they do in Denmark. I mean, when I wrote the proposal, they said, no, 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 no. Over there, everything is problem-driven. Possibly exams is just 10% of it. But our professor is here, colleagues are here. Accreditation wouldn't allow that. Undergraduate is 60% exams, 40% assessment. Sometimes you don't know that that is not our fault. We can't go beyond it. You understand that. So it is relevant. But, I mean, my students are here, not to boast. They will tell you that questions I gave to them are kind of problem-based or industrial-driven. Also bring to the lack of industrial academia. In certain countries, everything they do in industry, they will come and pick your research. 
The truth is that University of uh, Gempa, we are not directly collaborated with the university. I would say that we have this thing. Come and pick them and study them. Or the university say, these are the challenges we have. So until we get to that level, and I've told my rector here, we have privilege to have him, asking him through you that, can, is it possible that we can, if not a year out, can we have a semester out? There are certain courses, you don't do those long essays, but you go to industry, study, come out and write your report. Then from your supervisor at the industry, we can award you marks. Let's hope that, but that is also beyond we, the lecturers. All right, I think I want to add something on this issue of academia and research that is stuck in the library. You know, um, I'll say that someone like Tesla, Tesla started a research on how to transfer energy from one device to the other. It started in 1914, sometime, and it was abandoned for so many years. At the time, people thought that what he has studied was too abstract to be presented. Now, people are riding on that same knowledge and making so much money. So yes, whatever you are studying in the classroom, whatever research you are doing is relevant. And he mentioned the different types of research. Basic research may sometimes, in the, in the particular um, generation or even environment, may not seem relevant because they have not probably had solutions that would make that research ride on to make it applicable. Come f fast forward some few years, there will be the infrastructure to allow that same knowledge to ride on and become relevant. Now, I say that university education started and began and were developed based on free thinking and creativity. That is the background of university education. So maybe academia may have to find a way to still push ourselves to the very core of what university education started, free thinking and creativity. But because we are building humans, human knowledge, the standards must still work. We do not have free thinking without boundaries. And so they must still help in a way to shape the people. But yes, academia is still relevant and it still helps whatever we are thinking. Maybe someone is thinking about using uh, diagrams. Someone is writing, but the, the knowledge is still being pushed forward. Thank you. Thank you very yes. much. Let, let me be brief on, on your answer. I think that the key thing is that um, data representation and how we capture knowledge um, at this part of the world, we are far behind. We believe in text, and text is fading out. We, we will definitely be going back to the ancient times when everything is symbols, and that's where we are going. So what you are saying is very new. It's not new to me. We've, I've been part of research where we ask people to idealize, and then we tell them that they should draw energy. I don't know whether if there's somebody here who can draw energy. You just draw energy. So draw things like electricity. To draw energy. Yes, draw energy. Mm. And, and it was interesting. Now, these things are the sort of things that we do to see how people perceive things. So it, it's, 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 it's our problem. We, we, we accept it. It's our problem. We, we don't do that in education. We want text. And that's, that's the issue. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other question? One last question. Okay, two questions, then we will uh, wrap up. And then, okay. okay, thank you very much. Um, my name is Inusa Mohammed from Afro Arab Group of Companies. I think it has come to stay. We've come to realize that uh, digitization is the way to go. But what I'm seeing is that I think um, we are not being proportionate, it is not being proportionately driven across. I think most of this uh, consciousness or uh, awakeness of digitization is limited in the cities, in Accra and Kumasi. But when you go far to the interland, I think they are far, far behind. I once watched a viral video, a viral video on the social media where a lady, a small girl, a computer was brought, a desktop actually, and she was asked to touch a mouse. And you can imagine, she was wailing and crying. Davi even want to get to the, they were trying to force her, but she was saying no. It is scary. It is being said that when you, when you want to go fast, go alone, but when you want to go far, then you have to go together. Uh, looking at this, if you are trying to create the awareness here, right here, and leaving the interland far behind, whilst we're picking it up here, it is not going to be an entire process together in starting everything afresh in the interland as well. So I want to know whose responsibility is it to ensure that we are proportionately, like we try to gather along, not only limiting it to Accra or Kumasi or the uh, cities, but you have to 
move it together? Is it the responsibility of academia? Is it the responsibility of the government or we ourselves? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so let's take the last one so that they'll, they'll look at it together. Um, hello. Um, please, I'm Alice from Gempa. Um, so I want to ask, Please, I want to ask, as Dr. Riafi was talking about the robot that cleans his room, we're thinking it's a brilliant idea, brilliant innovation. But as these technologies are coming into, it's going to affect the humans. Because as he said, he wants them to sack the cleaner, which is going to leave somebody unemployed. So what <laughs> really are we solving? Are we solving the unemployment situation? Or because we have seen technology, we should incorporate it, and then it will also leave the other, um, other people um, unemployed and to leave the government burdened as well and it will still come back to the same situation. So at the end of the day it will just be a fraction of the country that's enjoying the technology that's coming in. So that's one question. Another kind of a comment that I want to make is that with the academia and the industry, I think at this moment it will be very difficult to you know, um, gather the use along. But one one thing that the government can do or our leaders can do is that we can start from the basics. So GES can change the whole education curriculum from the Kedagati system so that when they get to the point in about 20 years time, when they get to the, the university stage, it will not be so difficult as it is now with us who are already in the university stage. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you. Let me, let me pick the last one. Is there any other one last question anyone wants to ask? Hello, um, Eli came from UG. Um, okay. I wanted to ask when we get there. When we get to the point where everything related to students or everything related to Ghana as a country will be mainly digitized. Because when you go to schools or you read the information that's online related to particular websites, for example, the passport service like this. You they will tell you you should pay an amount. Um, the information they give you is related to a particular amount you're supposed to pay for something. But when you get there, you end up paying more than you're actually supposed to be on the website. So when we get there, when we get to the point where the information that will be disseminated would actually be the true information. That's what I wanted to ask. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, let, let me last start from the last uh, question. So the last question, the answer is simple. It's a cultural issue. Everything is a secret in Ghana. Everything. So um, if you want direction, you can't find it. It's a secret. You, not, you need to ask someone. Go to every university, even the university platforms. I don't know why we are attacking DVLE, but the investing platforms, procedure for application is not there. And so you find people, sometimes you find students even asking you, because everything, culturally, you have to ask the elder. And we, we brought that thing up, so that is it. Now let me start from um, the digital divide. Who solves the digital divide? It's government. In 2008, right, UK started thinking of making sure that every home in UK will have access to internet. They started levying everybody one pound. And they said the project will finish by 2011. And I tell you, by 2011, they have covered about 90%. So it's government. It, it, I can't do that. Government needs to put the infrastructure in place. MTN has just had the nod in Nigeria to start doing mobile money. What it means is that they, are, they have opened up to 20, sorry, 200 million people. They are going to collapse the banks. Now, let me come to your question um, as to um, the issue of employment and technology. The economists have been telling us lies that when you introduce technology, it brings unemployment. Anybody who says this, tell the person he's a liar. Go to UK and compare it to Ghana. Who is using more technology? Who has more employment? Go to America. Go to, if you can give me one example of a country that has adopted technology and there is a lot of unemployment, I will give up. It's not true. There are lazy ones amongst us and they should lose their job. I mean, you see, we, we should not be worried when people are losing their jobs. If the cleaner is refusing to clean your office and I can get a robot to replace that, why should I use the cleaner? 
If I go to DVLA and somebody is eating gari and beans, so he will not complete the application, I'll fire that person and put the application online. That should be our mentality. That is the mentality of the European. That's the mentality of the, those outside, and that's how they are making it. And we should stop helping lazy people. If there's a lazy guy in your family, let him go and work. Don't give him money. That is what we should do to change this country. Thank you. I think I just want to say that when it comes to the youth, one of the... So we mentioned about the government making policies. So it's a government policy about how education should be, about how from the primary level someone should be educated. Um, the academia must be prepared to meet the needs. One of the things we know about the youth, they are not very patient about putting in a request and not getting feedback. Sometimes you try to access a platform and you don't get response. You keep trying and trying and you never get a response. The youth will not use such platforms. So if we are targeting the youth who are the majority in our country, then we should be creating systems that give response. Thank you. Okay, I will conclude on the lack of information content in most of our portals. And what I'll conclude is that in Ghana, we have web developers. We don't have content managers. Simple. Because most of the application, like he said, even my own university, you want to apply for something, you still need to call the university to seek information. Because they employ somebody who is a web technologist to develop the website. What they didn't do is that they need to pay somebody who is a content person to provide the content. That one you deal with the user. We call it usability. What does the user want? In most cases, it's the user's bit that the content manager needs to provide all. A web developer understands world uh, web architecture. They don't understand contents. So these are the things I will conclude that it is not necessarily, it is because they don't have that. That's why I apply for platform. Information are scanty, not complete. You still need to go there, but we will be there. We admit we are behind it, but it is better to start from somewhere than not to start at all. Thank you. Thank you. It's better to start from somewhere and not, um, and not to start at all. And uh, there was a statement that recently I, I got from a GIZ uh, presentation. It says, many um, good ideas come from bad ideas. So today what I leave you with is um, most of the small, small bad ideas you are bringing up are those that will turn into good ideas. And it's good to have more of those bad ideas. Because the more bad ideas you have, the more you can shape them to become good ideas. Um, on that score, I, I want to thank all of you so much for making time to uh, attend this. I should have given a summary, but if I want to give a summary, things are so many that uh, it will also be another uh, recap. To avoid that, the key things I got was more like that disconnection between um, the people that must benefit from the, the digital economy uh, in terms of individuals, in terms of businesses. And so if business want to take advantage of this uh, digital economy and to be able to take partake in this after um, agreement, then what we are saying is that that statement I made at uh, that conference still holds that businesses need to digitize, they need to innovate, and they must adjust business models to capture new revenue streams because that old revenue stream is drying up. For both here and abroad, if you think only within here, then that will be a problem. Even outside Ghana will be a problem. I mean, just within Ghana will be a problem. So it should be outside uh, Ghana, within Africa, will be the best way to go. Workers in all sectors in this case must continually learn. They must reskill and they must uh, upskill themselves to take on better and more fulfilling jobs enabled by the digital economy. This I leave with you. Thank you so much and may the good Lord bless all of us all. Thank you. <laughs>